Hey guys, I'm continuing straight on from the previous video. So the next thing we're going to do is just find our axial load, which is given by the compression in steel 1, plus compression in steel 2, plus compression in steel 3, plus the compression in the concrete. So we found all these values from before. So there's steel 1, steel 2, steel 3. So just adding them all up, plus the compression in the concrete, which we found in one of the previous videos, was 595. So subbing that in there, we find that the total axial load in our steel yeah, sorry, in our section is 803.7 kilonewtons. The next thing we need to do is find the moment in our, um, in our section. So what we need to do is see where each of these forces are acting. Now, very simply, I'm going to redraw this nice and big just to show you, but just showing you in perspective to our whole thing. The steel is just going to be acting at its corresponding layer. So I'm just going to where the strain each layer is. So this was... Compression steel 1, compression steel 2, and compression steel 3. And the compression in the concrete is going to act in the center of the rectangular stress block. So it's going to act around there, compression in the concrete. So because it's rectangular, we know the centroid is just the midpoint. So I've roughly drawn it in the center there. And the last thing we need to do is put in the distance from our plastic centroid, which is what we're going to be taking moments about. So I've redrawn it nice and big. This essentially is what it looks like. So we have the compression in steel 1, compression in steel 2, compression in steel 3. We know that those layers were at 15, 100, and 185. 15, 100, 185 were each of those layers from the top. The distance of our plastic centroid we found in the previous videos was 103.9 from the top. And the compression in our concrete, so that acts at this distance here was gamma KUD, which we know is gamma D because of this problem we have, that the KUD equals D. So the distance from the top to the compression in the concrete would just be gamma D divided by 2. Okay, so it's just gamma.